This is Town Square Sunday on 1420 WBSM, the place where people come together to talk about the good things happening in and around New Bedford. And now, the moderator of Town Square Sunday, G Good morning and welcome to Town Square Sunday. It's a pleasure to be with you once again. We have a full show today. New Bedford schools facing challenging times. The district has made some gains in recent years under the sometimes controversial leadership of Pia Durkin. Late last year, Superintendent Durkin decided to resign. The school committee began the task of finding a new superintendent and they made their choice in late May, naming Thomas Anderson as the new superintendent. Mr. Anderson is with us today. Welcome, sir. Hi. Good morning. Morning. Thank you very much. <laughs> uh, for those who don't know uh, a lot about you, mm -hmm. uh, tell us a little bit about yourself. Okay. You know, I spent the last four years as superintendent in Randolph Public Schools, and before that, I was an assistant superintendent in District of Columbia Public School System. We were in Chicago for about two years, opened a charter school there. Great experience in the far south side. Uh, neighborhood Alco Gardens, about 4,000 units and those type of things. And spent the bulk of my career in Montgomery County in Maryland, so the Silver Spring area which borders DC. So I was there a teacher, principal, you know, all, all the way through, you know, district of about 100 and over 150,000 students, about 200 schools. So I'm a native of, of East Hartford, Connecticut, so I was able to come back, you know, home uh, close by. And I went to college in Rhode Island, you know, ran track at URI for four years. Also went to you know, did a year at Phillips Andover, you know, so I have a you know, good mix of, of different experiences. So. Yeah, so very large districts exactly. and smaller districts, exactly. right, Randolph. Exactly. Um, superintendents do move around a bit for a variety of reasons. Mm -hmm. uh, I think a few years ago, uh, I asked then Mayor Scott Lang, uh, what's the shelf life for superintendents? And he had done some research and said about three years. Yeah. And uh, some last a little longer, mm -hmm. some a little less. Uh, why uh, Why did you say, hey, I want to do something else besides uh, Randolph? Why did you leave? You know, it was, it was great. It was a great opportunity. And, you know, I still had three years on my contract. I was in a good position where we were able to make some, you know, some gains immediately, just mm -hmm. kind of putting some things in place. And I don't look at it as where it's, you know, people say rocket science. I do believe there's a formula to it in terms of being clear and consistent you know, developing and cultivating staff from within and those type of things. So, you know, in the four years, you know, we're able to kind of, you know, do contract negotiations to show some, you know, loyalty, I guess we could say, or some confidence in that side of it. But looking at the work that we were doing and knowing a little bit about New Bedford, the biggest thing was about timing. You know, positions don't come available, you know, that often, even though we say the shelf life might be three years, but, you know, it would be that opportunity to be able to do something. New Bedford has a lot of, has everything that I was looking for in the next opportunity anyway. It resembled a lot of the districts as far as, you know, a lot smaller than the district of, you know, than D.C. and Chicago, but similar it's areas. An urban exactly, exactly. So similar areas of need. I don't use the word concern. I think that we need to kind of grow together and, and really identify those areas of growth that we have. So that, that you know, that was the biggest thing, um, you know, thinking I, that there's something I have to offer because of the, you know, the background. So you were hired uh, in May, mm -hmm. and you've been here pretty much, uh, I won't say full-time, but uh, July 1st. Mm -hmm. July 1st, you know, we had some competing summer uh, family things sure, had to, of course. You know, to take care of, yep. but yeah. And uh, so you've had a chance to look around. Mm -hmm. uh, surprised by anything? No, no. What, what, has, what I'm encouraged by is the commitment that I feel and, and the pride in the city that's there. I mean, I still have pride in growing up in East Hartford, and I can see the pride that people have in New Bedford, and I, you know, I welcome that. There are some things that I've been looking forward to, honestly, since I left, left the District of Columbia, to, to, you know, to be in a city and, and having that opportunity. So, you know, there, there, there are no surprises. I think you have to go in with your eyes wide open. It's not about being naive and think that things are going to be easy because the job itself, you know, we said the average shelf life is three years. So, yeah. you know, when you think about those things, it's just being very honest and just, you know, candid about what, you know, and, and, and looking at what the needs really are and seeing how we can get there collectively. Have you seen some things that are encouraging that you say, hey, we can build on that? Oh, yeah. I mean, just thinking about the, you know, the, the district's plan overall 
in terms of what it's been doing in schools as far as some of the basic things like data meetings and, and walkthroughs and pulling principals and, and, and listening to their voice and, and working with teachers and really trying to see, okay, what, what is it that you have to offer? What do you, what do you want to do? So that I can see a lot of that already, but then just the other outreach from the community and the different people who have had the outreach and working with, you know, I want to name different organizations, but there's been a collective effort already and to you know really establish some positive relationships. So that's been really you know, very encouraging. Great. Um, so you pretty much met all the people you need to meet and that's in the six week period here yeah. or so? <laughs> probably not. No, no. I think we'll we'll probably cover that over the next <laughs> over the next three years. I mean I think just with with you know we, we, you get out there, you meet as, as many people as you can, really being able to I definitely recognize no one knows me, whether I could have come from the town next door. People still don't know you, you can come from within. People don't know you until you get into that role because the accountability changes a little bit. So really having being able to make myself available with some balance because you know my focus is making sure schools are ready to open and we will, you know cultivate you know taking care of our staff and those type of things. But um, no, there, it, it'll be again you know to, to say it as people are listening is to be available, but also knowing it's going to take some time to build a, a real relationship. You you can't rush relationships. People have to be able to see reasons why. They should have confidence in you or you know i don't use the word you know say we use the word trust but i'm saying you don't say well trust me it's we'll show get in there do the work people will respect and appreciate what's going on what's the next step to open the next uh, three weeks I, I i know that some schools will actually be open in august very soon yes, very yes, soon yes, yes, yeah. so uh <clears throat> haymack and uh, perhaps parker mm -hmm. and uh, parker i'm sorry yes yes yeah. haymack and, 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 and so they'll they'll be They'll be opening this month, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. very soon, as you mentioned. Yes. What's the next step? Uh, After we get schools opened? Or well, as we're in the process leading up, of getting, leading up to getting schools le opened. Leading up to that is, so for example, we have our Leadership Institute next, uh, for three days next week. We'll meet with my, my first opportunity to be with all the principals and all the other administrators together. And just being able to share you know, my thoughts. I mean, they, they, they've heard it throughout, but now have them collectively together and share my thoughts. Um, you know, goals and objectives, which are going to mirror what we have in place a lot, but also being able to hear back from them and thinking about, you don't make change for the sake of making change. So it really comes down to what are those areas that we need to stop doing and kind of look at those things first before we start talking about, okay, well, let's change, you know, these other pieces. So. Is this a period of evaluation for you? Yes, yeah. yeah. You know, and, and we say evaluation, and being honest, it is. It is. It's about evaluation, but it's a lot of observing and, and, and soliciting that feedback. But it is, in the end, it is about evaluating and seeing what things we need to try to put in place for the following year. But it's also, and I'll say this, what we do every day in education is too important to kind of sit back and wait. We know students don't have another opportunity to take care of that day that they may have missed. So really just going right in it and being able to support our teachers and having a clear vision and a view of what's happening in our classrooms and um, you know. You're listening to Town Square Sunday. I'm Jim Phillips. My guest is the new superintendent of schools in New Bedford, Thomas Anderson. Superintendent, uh, a lot of controversy over the past couple of weeks, really over the past few years, about charter schools in New Bedford. Yeah. At least two operations looking to expand and another one wants to create a new school in New Bedford. How do you view charter schools? Interestingly, you came from a charter school. Back, uh, charter schools are in your background. Exactly. exactly. Uh, so, um, uh, how do you view uh, them? And do you see them uh, uh, as negative? Uh, they take from your budget. Uh, we hear the argument all the time. You know, there are so many different sides of that charter school discussion. You know, I was trained in a, in a, in a traditional public school setting in a large district. We went to Chicago to open the charter. The thing I, you know, I quickly learned was the training of teachers and the training of the administrators is no different than it is in a in any school for the most part when you're focused on quality. So fast forwarding, you know, being in D.C. where there are a lot more charters and you have a different under you have a stronger understanding of the needs that they have and the role that they that they serve. So my objective is not to be anti. It's supposed to, it will be pro-student education development and those type of things with a very clear statement about I work for New Bedford Public Schools my objective is to make sure we have the best the most quality teachers the highest educational programs anywhere and so we will work together there's a lot you know we can collaborate in partnership but 
my intent is to have our enrollment back well over the 13,000 that it's been hovering at, you know, for a few years. So, all right. Um, how do you keep uh, talented teachers engaged and excited about coming to work? I, I mentioned earlier that uh, uh, there was some controversy with the previous administration and the union, the teachers union, uh, was not uh, her friend and she may have not been their friend uh, at the start. Uh, uh, it, it's not about being friends though, it's about having a working relationship to get the most uh, out of teachers and obviously to do so fairly and all of that. Um, so how do we go about doing that? You know, first I plan on having a very good relationship with the union president, so Mr. St. John. I met with him yesterday, just coincidentally, and I feel as though we can get, we will get along, I mean, we get along as, as, as people, above everything else where people respect each other as an individual and understanding our, our, you know, our roles in that situation. The union represents, you know, so to speak, my teachers, our staff, as their members. And you have to recognize the different roles and that'll get rid of a lot of the, you know, you don't have to have an adversarial relationship but also knowing that we're doing this in the best interest of students, but knowing that when we're dealing with a union contractual type of thing, it's just recognize what those roles are. The teaching job itself is hard. It's very hard, and it, it, it's increasingly more challenging in, you know, as time goes on. So I think one thing I want our teachers to know is that you know, the level of support, you know, we'll say the level of support, but support is sometimes just listening and appreciating the work that they're doing. You know, I'll go into classrooms and, you know, I. Physically being there, I never interrupt lessons and those type of things. I, I never did that as a principal. It's not a timely thing, you know, for, you know, to be able to do. But just being there and showing the support, but listening and getting feedback from teachers to see, again, what are those things that aren't working? But what is it that you really need? And sometimes it is just about listening because you know the job itself, like I said, is is very challenging. But I I, I believe that I've inherited a very strong group of teachers, support staff, and administrators. And I think it's my job to continue with that and making them feel as though this is a place that they really, you know, that they really want to be. You've said that the teaching job is tough, mm -hmm. and there has been, you know, some teachers who have decided to leave the district mm -hmm. in recent years. Teacher retention is something I think we'd all like to see because, you know, if you're working in New Bedford and you come back, and the more years you work in New Bedford, you understand the district exactly. and you, all of that, understand the, the youngsters you're working with. And, and that uh, type of thing. So, uh, retention is a big deal yes, yes. In, this, in this city. I believe that if you treat people right, they'll want to stay. Like I said, you know, not, not to be repetitive, but we think, okay, yes, the job is hard, but what are the things that I'm doing as a superintendent for our principals? I should be removing obstacles so they can leave their building. As a principal, I felt my job was, and we did, to remove the obstacles so the teachers could teach. And again, we can't make the job more complicated but also being able to retain those high quality, you know, the, those high quality teachers, but then supporting someone who may not be doing, you know, new teacher is not gonna jump out of the box and be the same as a sometimes five, 10, and definitely not like a 15 year veteran. So are we supporting them for the field itself and really, you know, giving them those tools to be able to um, serve our students in the best way? Is there an area that you see that needs improvement within the district? Again, you've only been doing this five or six weeks, yeah. uh, mm -hmm. uh, but uh, is, is there an area that you might want to tackle early on? I think when we look at climate and culture and just coming in and emphasizing to, to our staff that I'm not here to make change for the sake of making change and helping to reduce any level of anxiety that comes in with just new leadership and those type of things. So really that, if I'm gonna tackle something, it's just building those relationships, cultivating what's already in place, sticking to those objectives and turn those into the goals of the district. We know what MCAS scores and test scores and that, that that's there, we know the trajectory is there, but I think there's a lot of other pieces that will directly and indirectly impact that when we think about social emotional learning and, and, and a lot of the other components that go along with it. Uh, we all want to improve academic achievement in your mm -hmm. Bedford schools. You do, obviously, that's exactly. part of your job. Mm -hmm. But most would admit the progress has been slow mm -hmm. in recent years. Is there a better way to get there? And what is it? <laughs> I, I suppose if, if you could answer that exactly. question, you'd be the Secretary of Education. <laughs> I, I, I don't know. The Secretary <laughs> doesn't have that. <laughs> but seriously, it, it is, I, I think we need to listen to each other. So educators need to listen to one another 
and the non-educators really need to kind of take a step back sometimes and have an understanding of the complete picture. We can't just say, yes, we, we support developing a student's emotional well-being, but the next question is, well, how does that translate into test scores? I'm thinking, it doesn't, there's no translation into test scores. If we take care of students' skills and understanding that if they're not in the right mental place, the physical space is not always gonna, you know, that's not gonna get them to where we need them to be. So right, things have to be embedded. So if I'm thinking if there's some magic or some formula, it's only about how do we embed those skills that capture social, emotional, critical, and analytical thinking skills, and just finding a way to put that together on top of supporting teachers having an infinite budget. So that's the matching, <laughs> you know. If we can combine all those things, that that would get us there tomorrow. But we know that it'll take a little longer. But um, but again, like I said, the sense of urgency is still there. And one last thing, the, the sense of urgency doesn't mean because it's on fire and you can see it. It's internal and continuing to push and support. Tomorrow would be okay if we could get that. Oh, of course, okay. of course. <laughs> still excited about the first day of school? I, it's funny, I, I always am. It's just, it's, just, it's just one of those things, one of those things. Uh, my guest has been Thomas Anderson. He's the new superintendent of schools in New Bedford. The best of luck to you. Thank you very much. It's a challenging it. job, I know. Thank you. Thanks for coming in. Town Square Sunday will return in just one moment.